What's up? I'm Jeff Everhart, a developer advocate with WP Engine, and in this video we're going to talk about using the Remix framework with Headless WordPress. The Remix framework is a newer React-based framework that relies on web fundamentals and features built into the modern web platform to help make your applications performant and resilient. Since Headless WordPress allows us the flexibility to use many different front-end frameworks to create web experiences, let's dive in and see what Remix has to offer. To get started, you can click the link in the video description below to get to the GitHub repository for this project. I'm going to open up this code dropdown and copy the URL to this repo to my clipboard. Then I'm going to hop into my terminal and change into my code directory. And then I'm going to clone this project down so that we can work with it locally. So once it's cloned, I will uh, actually CD into that project as well. And then once we're in there, we're going to run or want to run npm install. And then after that, if we run npm run dev, we can start our project locally. If I open it up in the browser, uh, I can see that it builds successfully and then go to visit localhost 3000 and you should see something that looks like this. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my server at this point, uh, just using control C. We'll clear out our terminal as well. And then I'm going to uh, use a handy shortcut to open this repository up in VS Code so we can look through a couple of things in there. Uh, so the first thing that I want us to look at is how Remix handles data loading. Um, and so that this is one of the points where Remix uh, differs from a number of other frameworks and how it approaches this. Um, so for React developers who have done a lot of work with uh, GraphQL, which is something we're going to talk about today, uh, maybe you're used to using something like Apollo Client to query for static site pages, but then also uh, using that query dynamically inside of your components on the client to, to query data directly from the client. So Remix enforces a slightly different approach to data loading. And so if I open up our app folder, we can see how this is organized. Um, so we have components in here, which, is, which are components that I've created as a part of this project. Um, lib is a folder where I have just some information about Apollo and Apollo client, which we'll use to uh, query against our, our WordPress site. And then lastly, right below that, we have a routes folder. And this is where the meat of our code is going to live. So if you've used a framework like Next.js, um, Remix implements a similar uh, page-based routing system. So in here we have this index.jsx file, which stands in as the index page of our site, which you can see over here. And we also have posts um, with a dynamic route here that we'll look at later. So that's sort of the basics of how our, our Remix project is set up right now. Um, so let's just hop over for just a second and we'll just look at the WordPress site that we're also using for this. So this is your basic WordPress site. Um, I think the only special thing here is that I have the WP GraphQL plugin installed and configured. Um, and so that is what I will be using to communicate with our Remix site uh, over this GraphQL endpoint. Let's go ahead and just close out some of these tabs. We don't need that one. We don't need our GitHub repo or this one anymore. So we'll be working with uh, just our project. Um, and so let's go ahead now and uh, take a look at this index.jsx file. Because again, that's where the meat of this is happening. So let's go ahead and now that we've got our thing open, I'm just gonna hit npm run dev again to start our server one more time just to make sure that everything is dynamic. Um, and so let's take a look at what is inside of this index.jsx file. So like a bunch of the other uh, meta frameworks, if you will, you know what we're exporting at the end of this page space route is this default function that returns a JSX element uh, that represents our user interface. And so inside of this JSX element, you know, we, we interpolate data, uh, we, we can do things to structure the presentation of that UI, uh, however we want, right? So there's not really anything groundbreaking happening inside of here. But what I will draw our attention to is this use loader data hook. And uh, right above our index function, this loader function. So loader functions are a remix convention for loading data into our components. So instead of providing developers uh, methods to either load data on the server into your components like you would in static site generation, or to make those calls uh, 
directly against your GraphQL server like you might uh, using the use query hook from Apollo uh, directly inside of a component. Remix enforces uh, all data loading happens on the server inside of this loader function. So every time that your application needs data for a component, it will run what's inside of this loader function on the server and return that data uh, to your client. Um, so inside of this loader function, we can see we're just formatting a basic GraphQL query to get all of our posts with a couple of different content nodes. We make that query and then we return uh, those posts as a part of that loader function. And so down here inside of our index function, we use this use loader data hook to basically run this loader function. And so what gets returned from use loader data is the post that we returned inside of the loader function. And then we use those to construct the rest of our UI. And so this is a really interesting practice because I think personally, I feel like it simplifies a little bit uh, mentally when we think about how we're loading data into our components, right? If you have these two different methods, either on the server or on the client, you're using both of them. Sometimes it takes some mental gymnastics to really figure out which one um, to use at a particular time where here at least we enforce and you know knowing that all of the data loading code that needs to happen is going to run on the server it also makes it really easy to manage credentials so say for example i wanted to use some sort of api key uh, to get this data we know that i can do that in this case because that api key and none of my data fetching code which interacts with my database ever really uh gets exposed to the client. So that's also sort of a nice plus. And essentially Remix becomes a proxy for us to request data from other sensitive sources. So now that we've looked at that, let's take a look at how Remix handles dynamic routes as well. So if I open up this posts folder, I have this dollar sign slug.jsx file. And the dollar sign slug is a naming convention that Remix uses for dynamic route segments. So we know that inside of our code, uh, inside of our loader function actually, we can access the params that were sent with this particular request. And so by accessing params.slug, we get access to whatever the user passed in uh, to that dynamic route parameter. Uh, and then we can use that to construct a query to get a specific item by ID or slug or whatever, whatever sort of mechanism you want there. Uh, and so if we look at that in practice, you know, that's not anything super special that we haven't seen at other frameworks do. So if we click on the Narwhal post, you know, we pass this route up here for post slash Narwhal. Remix looks at that route param and makes that available to us inside of this loader function. And we do the same thing we did in the other one. We construct our GraphQL query, we make the query, we parse the response and then return that post uh, to be used in the use loader data hook inside of our route component. Now it's worth taking a look at our lib folder in our Apollo JS configuration. So in this example, we are using Apollo client to query the WP GraphQL endpoint on our WordPress site. But honestly, this could be any sort of uh, data fetching code you want. And so if you wanted to use fetch and just send post requests to that endpoint, you could create a wrapper here to do that. So that is the really nice thing is that Remix as a framework is very flexible in how you want to organize your code and what different types of applications you might be creating. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in determining, you know, how do I want to structure that? In other versions of this project, I've actually created a separate file that was like called WordPress service where I had all of my queries extracted out into single function calls. And so it left my loader function uh, very clean in that I just had, you know, post equals get, get post by slug and that was that. And so, you know, constructing all of this down into maybe two or three lines uh, really gives you as the developer a lot of flexibility in determining how you want to structure this and it doesn't necessarily shoehorn you into uh, any one way of doing things aside from the fact that all of your data is going to be loaded on the server, uh, which is kind of important. So now let's take a step back and let's head over to the browser and I'm going to click back to our index page and then I'm going to open up um, our dev tools in the network panel because there are a couple of things that I want to talk about that Remix does to help make your site a little bit more performant. And I figure we could dig in uh, to some more detail into link prefetching. Link prefetching is a technique that uses idle browser time 
to load important resources in the background so that they're available immediately when a user clicks on a link or does some other sort of site navigation. Other frameworks like Next.js also implement link prefetching in different ways. It's one of the things that can allow you to make your applications super fast and performant for your users so that by the time they've clicked on a link, all of the data that they need to navigate to a subsequent page is loaded and ready for them on their browser. So let's take a look at how Remix handles that. And it does that, uh, to do that, we'll look at our post component. And inside of this post.jsx file, we can see here that you know we have a function, we return JSX element, but the meat of this is handled by this link element that comes from the Remix framework. So to enable prefetching on Remix links, uh, we add this prefetch attribute, and then we can set it to a couple of different options. It can be none, it can be um, intent, which is what we'll change it to right now to sort of look at, and then render. And there are a couple of differences between these options. So let's save that file. Uh, let's just make sure that our application rebuilt, which it did. I'm gonna come over here and refresh our browser. So when we have our link elements set to prefetch intent, when a user hovers over or otherwise interacts with one of those link elements, it's gonna fire off some data requests of the Remix server. So we can see down here when we hovered over this post, uh, it fired off two requests. So it fired off one for uh, the slug, which if we look at this and preview its response, is essentially all of the React code needed to render that subsequent UI. So we've already loaded the data uh, that's gonna describe our user interface and how it's going to change. And then we've also hit this URL uh, that's passed in the route. And if we come over here and look at the response headers, um, or the, sorry, the request headers rather, you can see that its perfect purpose was a prefetch, right? So that we went ahead and we went out to Remix's uh, route API, for lack of a better term, said, we're gonna navigate here. Can you give us the data back for that particular post, for that particular route? And so what that means is that if we close this out and we go ahead and click to navigate to that post, we can see down here that uh, we made another request for slug, which got it from disk cache, which is nice, right? So instead of reloading that from the Remix server, it said, no, it's not the same, this is the same, and we're gonna load this from, from your browser cache. But then also we loaded all of the data for this post from something called the prefetch cache, which is just another type of cache on your browser. Now, if I open up the response, we can see that, oh, we got back all this nice, nicely formatted JSON data that corresponds to exactly uh, what we said these posts looked like in our, in our loader function. So it gives us back all of that nicely loaded data and it's just the data that we want uh, that was all loaded on the server. Um, and so that's really fantastic. And so if we hop back into our index page and I'll close this out just so we can make a couple more interactions and we sort of interact with all these other posts, um, we can see that it's making a request for each of those, each of that data, you know, making those prefetch requests and then if we navigate to it, we, we get again uh, data almost immediately from that prefetch cache. So Remix, in addition to uh, prefetching on intent, we can also prefetch on render. So if we hop back into our code and look at our post component and change this back to render, uh, save that file out, and then we'll navigate back to our index page, um, you'll see that we have a slight, something slightly different happens. Um, and so what that does is it essentially will prefetch all of those links as soon as they're available in the DOM. So as soon as our page loaded, we went and prefetched all of the link data uh, for all, every one of those routes. And you can see that Remix was smart enough to only load the slug.js file once. So only loading the code because all of those routes share the same, the same UI, right? So that's all uh, shipping our route component just once and then it's getting the actual data for all of our posts and storing it in that prefetch cache so that if we navigate to any one of those subsequent pages, uh, we should get that data instantly from that prefetch cache. And one of the last things I wanted to talk through as a part of this piece of content was the idea of using Tailwind, uh, CSS, Remix, and seeing how that works into a headless WordPress world. So I'll navigate back to my index page and all of the different site stylings you can see here are implemented uh, as, as Tailwind. 
And so if we look at uh, an example like this post component, for example, we can see Tailwind CSS is a utility class based CSS system. So what that means is that we load Tailwind into our project. And then essentially what we do as developers is use these different utility classes to describe the particular elements of our UI. So here we can see that, you know, we've got like a padding class to set some padding on this element. We want uh, rounded large corners. Um, we even have some animations in here. We've got transitions on hover uh, for translate and scale that you know give us this really slick animation that we've just added using these CSS classes. So it's a really neat system and something I would de definitely recommend that you play around with if you haven't. Um, now, in terms of integrating Tailwind CSS into the Remix framework, that was extremely easy to do. Both of the frameworks, Remix and Tailwind, have very clear documentation on how to achieve that. And I think I did that by just installing, uh, you know, maybe one or two uh, basic, ta this basic Tailwind package, uh, and then adding a few different uh, scripts to generate that CSS. And then ultimately that all boils down to this nice Tailwind CSS file that I believe I included at the root of my project. So once I've done that, that was basically all I needed to do to use these Tailwind classes inside of my UI and have them apply. Now, there is sort of one thing I wanted to talk through specific to people who are doing headless WordPress. Um, and it, let's, let's actually look at our slug page, for example. And so if I navigate into there, you can see that all of this is basically, um, you know, we've got some data, we've got the title, we've got the post date, um, and then we've also got this, the entire article, right? The body of the article, which comes back from our GraphQL endpoint as rich HTML already. And so the typical way that we approach this is to use the dangerously, dangerously set inner HTML attribute to set uh, that post content. Now, that's great because it's kind of nice to just take the content we had in our CMS and to pipe that into our, our user interface. And most of the time that works and you know sometimes we can, we can add some additional styling. Now, I will say that that methodology seems just a little bit at odds with what Tailwind gives us, right? Because I have this utility class based UI and so I don't really necessarily, unless I take another step to parse out this HTML, uh, either using, you know, like a React HTML parser or something on the WP GraphQL side to give me more structured block editor content, uh, it's hard for me to apply utility classes to HTML that's already formatted in my CMS. So what I was able to do was just to kind of, you know, like uh, do just a little bit of styling to it, so you can see there that there are a couple of classes I was able to apply uh, to the parent element to style the, the subsequent children elements. Um, but this is just sort of one thing to think through and Tailwind also has other ways of approaching this. You know, what it allows you to do as well is to extract out classes using uh, an apply directive. And that allows you, could allow you to target uh, more precisely some of the markup that comes back from the block editor. So either way, as a whole, this was very easy to get set up and running. Uh, and I think Tailwind actually, if I look at how I structured out this post component, would work fantastic for your custom defined models. So if you're using something like ACF, or Atlas Content Modeler to define your own custom types in WordPress, I think that this would work really well to create corresponding components. Um, but if you have long form posts, it might take a little bit more work to get the post content styled just the way you want. As always, thanks for watching. In this video, we talked about how the Remix framework loads data into your route components. We talked about different methods of link prefetching that you can implement to make your sites faster and how you can start to integrate Tailwind CSS into your React-based framework projects. If you are interested in other content, be sure to check out the developers.wpengine.com site or join us on our Discord. Thanks for watching.